What's up, motherfuckers? We are back looking at Bitcoin right now. So, <clears throat> you do see from anything else I've posted, I just added this box in here. It is because I was recording and I didn't like how the last video came out. So, um, uh, this is, uh, well, as of yesterday, this is our second consecutive green closure above our moon line over here, um, which is now at $20,918. And we are currently red for today, We're currently down a total of 0.32%. So there is a couple things that I do want to talk about. Uh, we are going to look at the weekly time frame. Um, we are going to talk about uh, like one or two potential uh, price action scenarios. And um, yeah, I'm sure there's more. But anyway, I'll get into that. Uh, as for your like daily price action, you're currently just like waddled essentially yesterday. Uh, once we did break above here, uh, our fib level is the 1.4 and 4 at 21,700, and you have a 1618 at 21,545. So you're basically within these two just ranging right now. Um, if you end up coming back down, look to hold that yellow line at $21,007. If you end up breaking above the 1618 which is at 21,545 your next major target is this vertical white or not vertical horizontal white line um which is at $22,794 uh that's your main target to get above if you do get above there then what we would be looking to do is potentially take out the summer highs which I do think we most likely would um and then yeah so going from here i do want to stem away with like potential scenario actually you know what hold on no, 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 no. I'll, I'll get to the potential scenarios here in a second but what i also do want to just emphasize really quickly um this moon line this horizontal white line at twenty thousand nine hundred that i've been emphasizing so much so the importance of this i just want to reiterate not only is it the pi cycle top line which i've shown you guys enough at this point whenever we are able to stabilize and maintain above there we typically go on at, at the bare minimum a 30 percent move like from there but um it's not only the pi cycle top line you did also have uh the bollinger band on the weekly i want to say yeah it was on the weekly um you had the upper deviation that was where right there as well and then on top of that you also had your moving average ribbons there on the weekly as well so the, the, definitely a important resistance uh level that we just were able to get above um and then our next two steps from here are that we end up have to get above this 1618 and then this white one uh white uh horizontal line and then i also do want to mention really quickly is it possible that we do end up pushing back down yeah uh is it possible that we end up breaking it yeah we have to stabilize above it that's why i've been saying two consecutive green days so that not just saying like oh we got above here and then we immediately fall back down that that was the point i was trying to make so um we do end up falling back down try and hold this yellow line being the 1.414 at 21,700 or 21,007 dollars and then following from there uh the closures essentially or even this horizontal line where that's our pi cycle top line but anyway next thing i do want to mention before i get into the potential scenarios and explain this box right here is the downtrend so once again when you do cross your downtrends on the like linear chart historically it's shown that your bottom has been in at that point um you just saw in 2018 and in 2015 you can see the same thing now if we subtract the log chart um <clears throat> what you will notice once again is when you actually break it on log you typically rally from there same thing with uh your 2015 once you break it we rallied but in 2015 we rallied only a little bit up a little bit higher than uh what we were in the range and then we dropped back down back tested it and then off to the races from there now let's imagine we have two scenarios going on here 
which I'm gonna get into the weekly time frame shortly after this, but um, let's imagine we have two scenarios. So scenario one is that we do actually end up rallying and we get up similarly to like the 2015 high or not 2015 high, but like similarly to 2015 because we are acting very similar to 2015, but that we only get like a little bit higher and then we go back down. Um, if we do get a little bit higher, depending on like how long that actually takes, because if it's just a green dildo like this, then uh, what do you call it? Then it obviously would just be really, really quick and would be no surprise if we come back down, back test, something like that. Um, then the next thing I also do want to mention here is if we actually end up rallying up above to around like 30k ish and then come back down into this range that we've been in forever now um back testing somewhere in this box would not be like off the table by any means um we're not just gonna go like vertically up especially from like the lows um like 2018 you kind of did and then covid black swan you came back down and even literally retested the um uh the top over here then in 2015 like i just showed you guys we broke above it and then back tested the actual downtrend and then it was off to the races from there so it's not something that's um irrational especially if we do just come back down and back test somewhere within here um <coughs> Excuse me, um, but I did want to mention that. And then also we do have a couple of different catalysts for next week. Um, we do have the CPI data and we also do have US elections. So definitely, definitely catalyst. If I were to bet one, I do think the CPI will go down. Uh, like I said, I'm not an economist, but just like, not to like sway anyone, but I don't think that we actually have like increased um, from like this time last year. So I would imagine that it does go down. But um, one, two, U.S. elections, I find it highly improbable that the market will do poorly. Um, if you catch my drift, like <laughs> that, that doesn't seem like on the table. That would look bad for a certain side, but um that and then going from there uh, i forget if we did oops no i didn't want that uh i forget if we talked about the daily indicators but we'll just go over the weekly because honestly that's what we're more uh more interested in to be quite honest because if we see the higher time frame that will give you the idea but so on weekly time frame, your wave chain oscillator is continuing, continuing to pivot up from here. Your BBWP, which measures volume and volatility expansion and compression, is back below 10%. It is currently at about 8.73%. Moving average is at about 15.24%. Uh, doesn't show signs of stopping just here yet. Um, RSI on the weekly time frame did actually break the downtrend, and we are through it, which. Boop, boop. We are above it so that's good to see if this ends up coming back down and back test it that would be cool um and then your stochastic oscillator is continuing to pivot up from here and your stochastic rsi is at 100 percent still but more importantly let's check out the heiken ashi candle since that is momentum based so which on oscillator same bwp that that wouldn't really change too much but um Volume and volatility. Yeah, what do you know? It actually did a little bit. I wouldn't have thought so. Um, RSI does appear to be a tad bit different. So let's try and like adjust that accordingly. So RSI right here actually hasn't broken the downtrend uh, with the Heiken Ashi candles on the weekly time frame, <clears throat> which is also something quite interesting. Um, so regular candles we did heiken ashi we did not your stochastic oscillator is continuing to pivot up from here and your stochastic rsi is at 100 percent still um comparing this back to 
the like prior bottoms i also do want to quickly mention because um i mean we're looking for similarities that's really what all ta is uh, from the past so you can see right over here when we started turning green rsi is relatively in the same spot your bbwp uh, yeah similar spot i would say uh wave channel oscillator similar spot your stochastic oscillator um we're not exactly at the top yet but uh it looks to be similar if we end up staying above and uh, pretty much just going sideways along the top and then the stochastic rsi is definitely uh, looking similar to 2018 however 2015 can we say there's any similarity here um yeah i would venture to say so i'd say that we're similar over here um at this very moment i would say the rsi maybe looks a little yeah, I would say it's fairly similar. Um, stochastic RSI is the same. Oscillator, same. And uh, BBWP, I would say it's relatively the same, but it didn't reach as low here in 2015. So, did just want to compare that, just give you guys an idea on that. Uh, if you made it this far, you're a champ. Uh, I know I'm not exactly the most exciting person to watch, but I uh, just try to provide uh, information and... Well, I think is at play, seeing how none of this is financial advice. These are all just my thoughts and opinions. But um, other than that, that was kind of just like a little bit of an overview. Um, not too much, like price-wise. The only other thing that I would um, definitely mention here is uh, to do <clears throat> if we do end up continuing the rally up from here. I do want to refer back to our macro fib as for that has provided us um, very, very good macro swings, um, like, or just like general macro targets, seeing how it was able to provide you the 2017 top, it was able to get you roughly near the bottom, uh, it got you the COVID top, it got you COVID bottom. It got you literally our top for this cycle, 2021 summer low, top back here again, that little sideways move once again in May, and where I do think our bottom is. I don't think we'll break below here. Also, logically speaking, uh, this right here, oops, shit this right here is a like psychological level 100 percent um a previous all-time high is like that is definitely a psychological level um but yeah uh so the last thing that i wanted to mention was this uh 2618 right here which is basically where it showed the prior high so i would imagine that would provide us some type of resistance which is at 28,600. So rallying up to there, coming back down, wouldn't be off the table. But other than that, that was one of the last things I want to leave off with. And finally, I already know this video. Wow, it's 13 minutes. I blabbered on. Um, and the final thing that I do want to mention here is not to sound like a broken record, but we are just going to read over the wave personality right here because it is very, very like Elliott waves, you can like draw them, yeah, but it's also based off of market psychology. So, in wave one of Elliott wave theory is really obvious at its inception. When the first wave of a new bull market begins, the fundamental news is almost universally negative. The previous trend is still considered strongly in force. Fundamental analysis continue to revise their earnings estimates lower. The economy probably doesn't look too strong. Sentiment surveys are decidedly bearish. Put options are in vogue and implied volatility in the options market is high. Volume might increase a bit as prices rise, but not enough to alert many analysis. So I think that um, I think that follows what we're talking about here right now. And you might be like wave one, but I thought you said we're in a wave four. Yes subdivisions 
so like how I um, showed basically my wave count those subdivisions within but that was the last thing I did want to leave off I know this was a super long ass video but other than that none of this financial advice these are all just my thoughts and opinions and you guys have a phenomenal day as always adios muchachos